this presentation that I've put together is based on, you know, what, what the code requirements are for special inspections. And it's really set up to help both the design professional and those that are enforcing the code. And, and uh, this is a great venue uh, with SK Ghosh, as many of you are design professionals, and there are many of you as well um, that enforce the codes. And so I want to highlight some things that, that I see when I'm doing plan reviews that often do not meet the code requirements in the plans. We'll, have, we'll often get uh, special inspection criteria in the documents that are provided to us. And almost every single project that I review, I tend to have comments in relation to special inspections. And so I want to highlight today what are the requirements outlined in the building code for a statement of special inspections so that those of you that are designers you'll you'll know how better to present that information on your construction documents and then those of you that that are enforcing the code will know better what comments uh, to make to make sure that they're meeting the minimum requirements of the code in relation to special inspections um, so hopefully it'll be a good conversation um, a one-sided conversation I know but uh, just to highlight again before we move on, just what Maria said in relation to comments. Um, you do have the, the Q&A section there. Please, please post comments as we're going, and, and I'll get to those when we have our breaks. If I see something sooner um, than, than that, I'll, I'll try to get to it. We'll talk for about 30 minutes. We'll have a short break. We'll, we'll address those comments, and then we'll get back going another 30 minutes. And, so we'll have a, a few opportunities for you to pose your questions and for me to, to try to address them in, in this two hours that we have today. Also, Maria mentioned that she had sent all of you um, the PDFs, the handouts for this at the very back. So, so you have the slides that we're going through, and at the very back is going to be an example statement of special inspections that we'll talk about. Um, if you did not receive that, on 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 your screen right now you can see at the very bottom there's a file section if you just highlight that file which is called january 52021 you'll then see that the download file option is there and you can download it so just keep that in mind and uh, it'll be helpful as we're going through things today um, my contact information is here. You'll see my email, my phone number. If any of you have questions and you want to reach out, uh, and if there's things I can clarify outside of uh, the two hours that we have today. So the way I've laid this out, there's there's five main sections of our short presentation. Um, we're going to do an introduction to special inspections. Why do we have them? Why are they important? How did they come to be? We're going to de delve into what are the actual sp statement of special inspection requirements that are in the code. We'll talk about three, you know, the inspection and testing provisions that are in 1704 and 1705 of the IBC. We'll also discuss miscellaneous items, and then we're going to get into some examples, and we're going to start breaking it down. For this type of a project, what should I see in relation to my statement of special in inspections? Now, how is that going to differ when I have this other type of project? So we'll really try to look at that. All of this, this presentation is based on the 2018 IBC, as most jurisdictions throughout the U.S. are enforcing, um, with the caveat. Now the 2021 is out there, and as we're discussing some of these things, I want to highlight some of the new special inspection provisions that have worked their way into the 2021 code, just so you're aware of what's coming. Um, and what changes there might be. Okay, so let's first do our introduction. Um, I want you to think about this in your mind. Obviously, we don't have a face-to-face -face here, but why should we be concerned with special inspections? And this is either your role as the design professional or your role as that person that's enforcing the code requirements. Why should you be concerned with special inspections? In Structure Magazine, there was an article in 2016 that, that it states this, you can help protect yourself from liability, provide a better product to the building owner, and provide an increased level of life safety. I mean, that's huge. For you as the design professional, you're protecting yourself from liability. You're making sure that the owner has a better product, and you're making sure that life safety is met. Obviously, for those that are enforcing the code, 
That's your principal responsibility is life safety. And so that's the reason why we want to make sure those enforcing, we want to make sure that the minimum requirements outlined for special inspections are being met for each project. Civil and Structure Magazine also had an article in 2014 that stated, there is probably no single act that an engineer can do that is as effective at reducing his or her liability exposure as performing inspections during construction. And, and in that article, they were probably maybe referring more to structural observations by the engineer of record, but at the same time, special inspections are, are, are equivalent to that. They, they really are.